Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today at Meander's Market. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing a show which we haven't named yet, uh, but essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over all of our um, uh, different ideas for a certain character theme in order to give you guys ideas of what you can build. So, uh, I'm Caleb. I'm Daniel. I'm Aaron. This is a, um, a, a very loose uh, concept. We're just going to go around discussing things and giving ourselves ideas and just chatting about the different things you can do for character concepts. And Aaron, I think you said you were going to start today, correct? Sure, yeah. So um, the character concept we decided, we gave ourselves a week to come up with a build. Uh, just a heads up on the parameters we decided to discuss as we went up to level 14 characters. Um, we wanted to have at least two magic items planned out. You don't usually have control over that as a character, but you might be able to convince your DM to give you a little, throw you a little bone. Um, <laughs> and you. yeah, exactly. And I, I, we didn't discuss this, but I, I use a standard array. I think Caleb did as well. I don't know if Danny did, but. I honestly uh, wasn't super concerned about stats, but. That's fair. That I makes can, sense. I can just apply those really fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, to kick us off, we uh, started for our first show. We wanted to do, since it's uh, almost Christmas, today is the 19th when we're recording. So um, we wanted to do, a f our first theme would be winter, to yeah. leave it a little vague. We, we started, I think, with Christmas, and then we were like, let's, let's like... I think we started with ice. Yeah. That's right. We were like ice mage. And then we were like, no, let's make it that's, more broad. So yeah, that's too specific. Yeah. Yeah. So we decided just to go with a winter theme. And so for my character, I, um, I decided what, what do you think of when you think of winter, you think of ice. So I wanted to make like an ice mage and I just went with the classic evocation wizard, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's the best way to deal cold damage in the game. Um, so you I'll can kinda... even take the modifier off that. It's just solid damage. Yeah, it's exactly. true. It's true. Um, so I I went with an evocation wizard. Um, I also went with a white dragonborn for the race. That was kind oh, of fun. you know adds add, add uh, dragon breath ice damage. That that's a lot of fun. A lot of yeah. thematics there. That's appropriate. Um, I named my character Professor of Ice Tim. Um, these <laughs> these guys will know. I name. I, the amount of NPCs and characters that I have named Tim. It is his go-to joke name. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so my idea for a character was kind of a professor, a old dragonborn wise man who liked to teach classes and is very knowledgeable. Um, I put my, of course, as a wizard, I so I use standard array, as I said, I put my high stat and do intelligence and then constitution after that and then dex for the AC bonus. Mm -hmm. um, background, I went with Sage Professor. You know, that nice. makes sense. Makes sense. Um, I felt like winter is a um, chaotic season for most people. Christmas mm -hmm. time and buying gifts and everything. Yeah, so absolutely. my character is chaotic good because <laughs> it's still a good season. Everybody loves the Christmas and you know, all, all kids and teachers and a bunch of other people get Christmas breaks and take PTO from work. And it's just, it's a good relaxing time, but it's, it's pretty chaotic. Let's see. Okay. I guess I should just go over spells. Cause that's really what's, what's possibly unique, although not really because it's all ice spells. I mean, you, you for the most part. did choose to build a wizard. So spells are going to be the main thing you got there. <laughs> it does yes. seem to be significant. Definitely. So the two obvious cantrips we got going, we got Frostbite, nice. we got Ray of Frost. Nice. The, two, the only two ice, I think, cold damage cantrips a wizard can learn. I don't think there's any for other classes either, but, yeah. you know, it makes sense. Um, I also, so you get five cantrips as a wizard. Um, and I, uh, so I, I went with two of my other ones was gust because of, you know, it's very windy and ice storms and such and create bonfire because everybody likes warming up next to a fire. And the next one might surprise you. I, I kind of was just reading through some spells and I, I realized something about a spell that I don't ever use in this part, but I, I go to spell a lot is prestidigitation. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so one of the things you can do is uh, chill or warm up a, a cubic foot of non-living material for an hour. So you can warm up a blanket, you know, you know, those electric warming blankets. Yeah. You can just warm yeah. up and warm up a nice, up. a nice cup of hot cocoa. 
Exactly. You know, and um, speaking of hot cocoa, who better to serve hot cocoa than unseen servant? Just uh, <laughs> if nobody else is there to serve you, you can you can cast unseen servant. I've also got, of course, first level spells, ice knife and frost fingers, just classic ice spells. I actually built when I thought about the character, I was like, what's the most like ice spells in the game? You've got ice knife, you've got Snowlock snowball swarm, and you've got ice wall. Those are just like my immediate thoughts. That's where they go mm -hmm. when you think ice characters. So I definitely went with all those. Um, other ones, I went Burning Hands, just another way to keep warm. Um, distort Value, because you always have to do that with Christmas presents. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dark. <laughs> Dark. Uh, okay, um, all right. And then Sleep, because everybody likes sleeping uh, during wintertime especially. Yeah. Um, Unseen Servant, as I said, I skipped ahead on that one. Ray of Sickness, because everybody gets sick around Christmas time. It's just, it's the season of getting sick sadly this season especially but hopefully that will end soon um grease just because you eat a lot of greasy food um fog cloud more weather stuff yeah mm -hmm. all right level two finally now with level one uh warding wind because it's windy you know i pr pretty much sub themes are fire and wind i'll just throw that out there fire is just nice. generally good good okay. communication wizards and yeah. you got to keep warm and wind, mm -hmm. I kind of went with that blizzard theme, so I won't explain yeah, those okay. anymore. Okay. Uh, then Snowlock, Snowball Swarm, Sleet Storm um, for my first third level. Um, I went Galder's Tower, because if you're caught in a blizzard, what better way to uh, find a place to stay than to just magically make your own? And then Catnap, because naps. Um, and Fireball, because that's an evocation wizard's dream. I went with Leoman's Secret Chest, because honestly, what better way than as a wizard to give a Christmas present and to pull out a tiny little chest in your hand, hand it to somebody and then just let it grow and see their eyes like sparkle. And especially if it's like a kid, they're like, Oh my gosh, that's so cool. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're so wild. The more, the more you describe this character, the more I'm imagining oh like, gosh. like, like some legendary figure or, or holiday spirit that just roams around. And if you run into them, they take care of you and give you presents. Like go on your way now. Shoot. Congratulations, Aaron. You have created the ghost of Christmas Blasty. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Also known as the professor of ice, Tim. <laughs> um, the next one I went with is fire shield. I did not know that had an ice form of it. It does. So it sure does. Cool. Um, you can also use the fire form of it, honestly. That's helpful with this build as well. Yeah. Um, I went Elemental Bane, because that just sounds like a lot of fun with ice spells. You've got Ice Storm. That makes sense. I went with Conjure Elemental Water. And a fun little thing with this is I went the Odalux Freezing Sphere. And I also, my one of my favorite ideas for this uh, concept was that you could have a, a Water Elemental, like, kind of envelop another character and then freeze it with the Odalux uh, free freezing spear. Oh, that's Because you, you can freeze the elementals and they can still move. They just get a reduced movement speed. <laughs> so they can still attack and stuff with the character, the other enemy inside of them in theory. Wow. Pro we'd so probably like, have to talk to a DM about that, but yeah. it would be a lot of fun. Ex like I, how exactly that would work, I'm not If sure, you could but... find a way to make it work, that could be really interesting. It Very gives fun. me vibes of like a Azula at the end of um, yeah, the last year, exactly. just freezing an enemy in place like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, oh, I also I, I added a uh, when I added create and destroy water to this character near the end. I was like, just in case I can't get the, the elemental thing to work, if we're in a small enough space, just fill it with water. Cast like a seventh <laughs> level, like uh, your character <laughs> Caleb did, uh, seventh <laughs> level create and destroy water, and yep. then freeze it with a little <sighs> freezing spear. That, definitely it's my great. best use of a spell. No, uh, I went hold monster. I feel like that could be very flavored, very icely. Um, sure. You've got cone of cold, of course. Uh, control mm -hmm. winds, wall of ice. Yeah. Some classics. The freezing spear I mentioned. Yeah. And honestly, I one spell I was looking at that I always look at on characters when I when they can cast these spells, but I would never consider unless I was going for a build this thematic is uh, investiture of ice. You know mm. those investiture spells. It's not a it's not a great spell. Yeah, you don't. You, when you look at that spell, it's six level. It do, it does a lot of things, but your six level spell slots are pretty important, and it's hard to set aside something for that. But with a wizard, you have so many options on spells. 
And you and can take four of them in the two levels after you exactly. get six level spell and slots. Plus, and like I, the way I built my character was assuming I didn't find any other spells in the world. I I could totally know more spells if depending yeah. on what the DM gives us as far as loot or shop options. So yeah, true. It's a great part keep of that playing in mind. A wizard. Yeah, um, I also went mage armor because I remembered wizards don't have armor. Proficiency. Wizards are not strong for and so I was like, you know, I had like one spell left at the end. I was like, I need I need mage armor. Like that just has to happen. Mm -hmm. Um but the kind of capstone spell for this uh build, I realized there's not really any above seventh level, which is perfect because that's as far as we went. Um mm -hmm. above seventh level spells, so there's not really many ice things that are specifically ice. You can do like I think it's control dragon or something like that. Uh that's an eighth level spell. Something dragon, illusory dragon, illusory dragon. Yes, which is a fun um, spell. It's a yeah. very interesting spell. It is. Uh, and there's, I can't remember. But there's a ninth level option that does cold damage, but I think it does mm. all damage. It's prismatic like, wall. Prismatic wall. Yes. Yeah. That's it. But that's not specifically ice themed, so we wouldn't no. ever build that. Um, Obviously, so, prismatic so wall is a shit spell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Doesn't do cold damage only. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Precisely. Um, but the last uh, spell I, I wanted to have is like the capstone thing was Simulacrum. Um, if you don't know what that is, it copies yeah. a creature and makes an ice form of it. So with my background, I get to learn two languages. I went with Primordial and Elvish, because Primordial, you can talk with uh, Elementals, which is very ice, icy, I feel like. Nice. And Elvish, just because that's magical generally. I know Draconic already because of the Dragonborn. Um, I guess other things I should talk about. Oh, I went with, so I had, you get three ASIs as a wizard up to level 14. I didn't multi-class, by the way, if you didn't notice. Mm -hmm. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. But first thing, I went, since I went with standard Saturday, I went with a bonus to intelligence so I can get it up to 18. It's a pretty solid stat level, so you want to get that pretty early on. Sure. Um, second thing I went with is cold elemental adept to add basically a bonus to all the cold damage that my character deals. Ice mage. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the third one, I went with Warcaster. That's just one of the best wizard spell or features for... Yeah. And most spellcasters, honestly. Um, and the, the last... There were two... You get two other spells, or ASIs, uh, if you go past level 14. And so for those, I went just to max out Intelligence. And uh, the last one would be Resilience Con. Uh, another really good ASI for um, wizards and Very spellcasters. Valuable. We also, uh, as I mentioned, decided to go with two uh, magic items. Um, I picked two of like the I the top ideal magic items of like if our DM is really nice and gives me with this character all the ice items I want, I can do this. But I also mm -hmm. came up with some backups just in case you you know you just need to go to a crappy magic shop to buy some frost items, you know. Um, so the first one, obviously, I feel like is Staff of Frost. That's just what everybody thinks of when they think of a magic ice wizard. It adds ice spells. Uh, you get resistance to cold damage while you're holding it. It's got a lot of charges. You can cast, I guess, Code of Cold, Fog Cloud, Ice Storm, and Wall of Ice with it. That's just super helpful. Adds a lot of base, essentially and spell slots. For all your are really good spells, by yes, the way. Yes, and, and notice all of which my character knows because Ice Wizard, you know? Yeah. Uh, Weird. <laughs> yeah. And the other one I found, and I, I've never had an artifact in a campaign. I was talking to Caleb about this earlier, and it's called the uh, Ring of Winter. Um, but yeah, so those are my like top tier, like, oh my gosh, if I could get any item I wanted, that's what I would go with. Um, mm -hmm. I went with some uncommon items that you could grab in case you didn't couldn't get those. You know, mm -hmm. There's the Ring of Warmth that gives you resistance to cold damage, and Makes you're sense. unharmed by temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees. Pretty solid. An even more solid item for that kind of thing is uh, Boots of the Winterlands. You get resistance to cold damage also, but you also ignore difficult terrain created by ice or snow. And same with the temperatures. Um, if you wear heavy clothes, you can tolerate up to one, negative 100 degrees. Um, so really good. Um, I also added just Wand of the War Mage. You can get an uncommon one for a plus one spell bonus. So, and I came up with kind of a personality for my character. He likes teaching people. He's trying to protect his students and his, um, his I guess, library or university, wherever he works. It's in a cold climate. Nice. You know, it's, it's a lot like Skyrim's uh, wizard school. Um, what's that place called? Winterhold or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it is Winterhold. 
Yeah. College, and, college winner, Julio. Yeah, but his uh, biggest flaw is that he's got frigid bones and he'd rather stay warm by the fire than and let others handle any crises oh my that God. come up. Is, is, that, <laughs> is that purely all mental? Because he has resistance and immunity purely cold. mental <laughs> with the magic and, items he has like like he never takes cold damage yeah. oh and that's God. his excuse for not wanting to do things he's kind of like uh a lazy character he's like i don't want to like if somebody else can handle it go ahead i'm not a hero i'm just some old professor fella i'm oh just gonna stay God. by the fire and stay warm oh my god i love it i love <laughs> it but i also hate it <laughs> Yeah, so if any, if your party with this character for me, if they were like, hey, we want to go on an adventure and kill this dragon, he's terrorizing villages, you'd be like, well, you know, I think you guys could handle that. I'm going to, I just made some hot cocoa. I'm going to go get that and, and enjoy my fire. And he's it's a black cast. dragon. It's not immune to any of your spells. <laughs> okay, cool. Have fun. That, that's fun. <laughs> And if I need to, I'll do something about it. But right now, this cocoa is getting cold. So. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, <laughs> so that's incredible. my character concept. Oh, I also made him um, fairly uh, tall and old. He's 60 in Dragon Years. It's, he's the age the same as humans. Nice. Um, all righty. Yeah, that's all I got. So what do you guys think? I Maybe love it. Sounds fitting, honestly. Sounds really appropriate. Oh, another thing that was kind of funny, because of my constitution bonus of plus three, and I just went with uh, like average roll, I guess a four for mm -hmm. the health. HP is exactly at 100. Nice. Just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> Turned out interesting. I don't okay. know. I may have okay. done the math wrong, but I think it's 13 times four, or sorry, times seven because of the four plus three. And then, it, so that's 91. And then add the nine from the little one, and uh, you got a hundred. Nice. Okay, so the concept that I came up with, surprise, variant human. It just does the most things that I wanted it to be able to do at level one. It's human Fair that's enough. variant. Yeah. Um, specifically, because y'all know why I wanted variant human, I wanted a feat. Yep. And the feat that I wanted was, in fact, uh, the metamagic adept feat. Ah, that's a good Tasha's. one. Tasha's. Interesting. That's a good okay. one. And the two metamagics that I would choose with that are empowered spell and transmute spell. Good choice. W remind me, what does transmute spell do? I don't think I know. Uh, you can spend, I believe it's one sorcery point, yep. to change the damage type from uh, the ones listed oh. on the spell to instead be a Ooh. different damage type. So I Fireball. can turn pretty much Ooh. any exactly. uh, pretty much any druid spell into uh, cold damage. And surprise, druid is yeah. my, uh, my pick for class. Oh, nice. uh, mostly, I do have a little bit of multi-classing going on because at level 14, eh, I want to preface this with the fact that my inspiration actually came in the form of I took a walk a couple days ago while it was like 45 degrees and was like, man, it's not just cold out here. It feels empty, huh? barren. And so kind of the sort of the sub theme that I have going on is based on the ability to survive on your own. You know, the ability to live through the harshness of cold. Okay. Very much without re relying on others. Okay. Uh, so the four spells that I chose for the cantrips for a druid, because, mm -hmm. you know, actually, no, I don't, I don't get four, because uh, the build I went with is druid nine, Mm -hmm. okay. Ranger two, Rogue three. Okay. The Rogue surprised me. <laughs> It'll make sense. Um, and I actually just double checked. No, Druids don't get their fourth cantrip until level 10. Oof. Uh, so only three cantrips. This build went through a few iterations before I settled on one. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, so the three that I decided would be the most helpful for this type of character are Create Bonfire, 
uh, Gust and Frostbite. But if I had one more, it would probably be Shape Water. Hmm. That's a good Shape choice. Water, um, yeah. it's, it's just solid. Um, it can make water solid. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't necessarily want to go through just all the spells that the druid could use because like wizards can learn a lot of spells druids have their entire spell list available to them exactly yeah um but i will say i went circle of the land and i want to go through the um the land spells that this druid gains uh surprise i chose arctic makes sense um the spells that they get from that are hold person and spike growth very solid and easily flavored to be very ice themed sleet storm and slow mm. again really like interesting and sort of sort of contributes to this idea that it's a character who's really good at like attrition battles yeah mm-hmm. uh freedom of movement and ice storm very solid yeah and commune with nature and cone of cold uh and like don't think I need to explain why all of these seem like really, really cool spells for this type of character to use. Mm-hmm. Um, other notable ones from the Druid spell list, just a handful. Um, create or destroy water, uh, fog cloud, ice knife. Where did it go? Uh, pass without trace would be a really, okay. really valuable yep. spell for this character. Yeah. I have um, to say, uh, my favorite you've mentioned so far is slow. I didn't think about that, but that's a really good yeah, idea. That, that's a very it's a really interesting one. concept, and I didn't even think of it. Wizards of the Coast thought of it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've never thought about, like, what we like to do in campaigns is we like to allow characters to kind of make the spells different, you know, make it look the way they want it to, to fit their character. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I feel like slow is just one of those that could, there's so many options you could go with for that. Yeah. Like how it looks, you know? Yeah, it it feels powerful. Yeah. I mean, you could, like, I could see you, you can flavor it being ice. You could even flavor it being, like, if you're a fire mage, you are literally heating up the air around them so much that they're exhausted and can't move, that, like, yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff. Like, you could take it all kinds of crazy directions. Exactly. That's, a, like, that's a really cool concept. Like, if you're, like, a necrotic mage, like, <laughs> if, if you manage to find a way to make that super viable, I mean... Yeah, exactly. you're literally sapping the life force out of them. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys have read this section in Tasha's. There's actually a section about like how to let your players reflavor spells, mm-hmm. and their example with art is a farmer sorcerer you shooting magic missiles shaped like chickens. <laughs> I, I would encourage anybody to go look up that art oh because it is. I have good. not looked at this page, but that's beautiful. <laughs> that <laughs> that's is so, so funny. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, Danny, continue. No, you're all good. I like, there's just a lot of spells from the Druid spell list that it's really, really easy to make feel very wintry. Mm-hmm. Um, in particular, I think of like the spells that let you summon or conjure elementals. Yeah, yes. for, sure. Um, for sure. Those are those are super cool. Um, and using transmute spell with wall of fire, yeah, feels oh, like yeah. it could be really poignant. Interesting. Because congratulations, Wall of Ice is its own spell, but now you're creating a wall of energy that that like chills things. That's really cool. I would love like a, it's got a very different vibe, but it's super interesting. I would love like a blue flame aesthetic to that. That would be fun. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. But so for nine levels of play, uh, this druid, this this human druid. Uh, just has very much the sort of wintry theme. Mm -hmm. Uh, And for one of the ASIs, obviously, uh, I want the elemental adept feat Mm -hmm. for cold damage. Of course. Because it's just good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, And for the other ASI... I'm kind of torn between boosting wisdom from 16 to 18 Mm -hmm. and uh, taking another feat like Warcaster. Again, very, very good. But Mm -hmm. not as many of these spells as you might guess actually require concentration. And the ones that do, this character would probably be able to just avoid them. Yeah. Uh, 
but I think instead for thematic reasons, I would probably boost Dex from 14 to 16. Mm. That makes sense. Uh, getting into the two levels of Ranger, mm-hmm. um, obviously at first level you get favored terrain, and I think you know, Tundra or Arctic or however it's worded in the, in the book yeah. would mm-hmm. make a lot of sense. Uh-huh. You know? Plus, it doubles the amount of food that you can gather in a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, it means that when you're traveling alone, you can travel stealthily at a normal pace. All of those are super useful for a lone survivalist. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Especially in the cold. Yeah. Uh, but so the two levels of ranger would get uh, first level favored terrain. And at second level, it would get a fighting style. And Oops, for the okay. fighting style, I would choose from Tasha's blind fighting. That's a good one. Wait, very, I, very I haven't good. seen this. What, what is blind fighting? It gives you blind sight to a range of 10 feet. Oh, I yeah. like that concept. Yeah, it, because cool. in the winter, it gets dark a lot faster. Mm-hmm. And so you spend more of the day, especially like the times when you're likely to get ambushed or hunted by a predator mm-hmm. in the dark. Yeah. And I, e- frankly, even during the day when the sun is out, uh, snow blindness is a real thing because you're surrounded by white. So even then, if you're going to be in a fight, you're probably going to have your eyes closed. That's true. So, that's yeah. true. Another thing, uh, a lot of D- people who play D&D don't realize how hard it is to fight an enemy that either casts greater invisibility or has some other invisibility option uh, for combat. It's uh, a warlock there are, with darkness and devil sight. There are so many options in D&D or so many spells that say you have to see a target yeah. to be able to cast a spell. Yeah. yeah. And I realized this, uh, Danny, uh, in, our, in our campaign, he threw a, like a fey dragon at our, at our characters uh-huh. and he turned invisible. And I looked through my spell list and almost every single spell needed to be able to see the car- see the, uh, the enemy. And yeah, I think you wound up just shooting in the dark with Eldritch Blast. Yep. I think I hit it a couple times too, but it was really hard. <laughs> my my guy knew fairy fire, which would have been great, but it's a dragon, so it just had. A, I think it had advantage, right? On, uh... It has legendary resistances, yeah. so it yeah. just said no. Uh, and I guess you guys who know, and don't worry, audience, it will be explained sooner or later. Uh, if we look at my rewrite of the ranger class, there is one other substantial benefit that could be gained at second level. So for those of you who are unaware, the Ranger class in the player's handbook, not great. They kind of did some work to fix it in Tasha's and it's better now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I started working on a rewrite of the Ranger class a year and a half ago, finished it, what was it? Five, six months ago? Yeah, it was was a little bit ago. Right around, um, toward the beginning of quarantine. Christ, that sucks. (laughs) I Um, mean, that's when you have had the most time, I guess, right? (laughs) Yeah, true. Uh, but so without getting too much into detail, cause trust me, that's going to be a whole other video. Uh, I, I decided to go ahead and give the Ranger class a, a more viable spell outlet, sort of like the Paladin has divine smites. I thought, eh, let's give the Ranger something to work with and being that they have nine levels in Druid, they have up to fifth level spell slots, which is really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, because I know you guys are curious, why are there three levels of Rogue? Yeah. Uh, the first two levels, you know, just generally solid Rogue things. The third mm-hmm. one is really where it gets valuable because of Xanathar's Guide to Everything and the Scout subclass. Uh, the yeah, one that, that nobody oh. talks about. But it's very good. I've seen it. It play. gives you expertise in nature and survival for free. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> why, why pe- most people look down on that is because a lot of uh, people that play D&D that run campaigns just kind of like, just kind of wave aside the yeah. need for survival skills. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so when you're out in the woods, they don't keep track of food. But there are definitely campaigns that can uh, make this really useful. And yeah, I, I enjoy that kind of thing. Yeah. And so imagine 
having um let's see survival is wisdom so plus three at this point we're level 14 so proficiency bonus is plus five plus five so that's uh plus 13 to survival there you go. with a 16 in wisdom <laughs> it took no work to get there yeah i you know, I really think that's too low. You need to work a little harder. <laughs> You're right. I'll have to find some way to get double expertise in it. <laughs> double expertise, boys. Man. Uh, at 14th level, that's nine levels of druid for plenty of fun spell casting and some wild shapes which you can use we didn't even really talk about it much because if you're not a moon druid it's not really your specialty but <laughs> you can yeah. absolutely this kind of character specifically would use that sort of thing for you know survival for efficiency mm -hmm. you know to to even the odds a little bit mm -hmm. um yeah. And then just enough levels in Ranger to get some really useful uh, fighting abilities and survival skills. And then some Rogue to make him crafty and boost up his sort of natural abilities. Mm -hmm. um, I would go with the Outlander background for this character. You know, obviously okay. this is Makes a sense. survivalist. So you really want them to be able to no nature and yeah. outlander is the one who really does that the best yeah um as for personality this character lives very thoroughly alone so they're probably not good with people constant er, charisma, charisma absolutely is the dumb stat for this character yeah um yeah yeah it's this character's not good at charisma <laughs> this character doesn't talk to people like what are you talking about yeah yeah well, what's funny friendly i didn't mention this about my character but my dump stat was actually strength i decided that charisma should actually be like i think it was number four mm -hmm. because you everyone is puts on their charm a little bit for the christmas season <laughs> you know? yeah whereas this character is meant to symbolize more like the harshness of mm -hmm. like winter and the frozen landscape mm -hmm. This character is not good with people, and given that they have no one to talk to, their voice is probably very, very weak. Mm -hmm. I also, depending on whether or not they, uh, they use the new familiar ability from Tasha's, mm -hmm. uh, they might not the be... Uh, you can burn your wild shapes to cast fine familiar as an action. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, they only last for a it, it only time. lasts for a few hours, but mm -hmm. like that's sometimes enough. And you mm -hmm. get your wild shapes back on a short rest. That's not that bad. Yep. Yeah. Depending on how often he uses that ability, it might have been literal years since the last time he's talked to anyone, mm -hmm. which does things to your brain. So this character could be crazy. That's entirely possible. You know, I'd say probably is. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. that's how um, i would run it at least yeah i would define this character's alignment best as true neutral because in nature there is no law or chaos there is no good or evil there is only life and the mm -hmm. things that are not strong enough to keep it and peanut with the squeak toy Classic peanut, peanut could you please <laughs> dad is trying to have an important conversation with some work buddies <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it sounds like a really fun character. Did you decide on some magic items also? Uh, I sure did. Uh, obviously, I think Staff of Frost and Boots of the Winterlands are probably things that we all came to at some point or yeah. another. Mm -hmm. I guess you didn't run it. Would you run Ring of Frost with this build if you found it? Uh, Ring of Frost, the... The like, living ring that I mentioned. For oh, Ring of the Winter. Yeah. Oh, is that what it's called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that one. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, probably, if only, but, hey, somebody to talk to, finally. <laughs> <laughs> it's so yeah. lonely out here. Uh, if, you, if you really want to leave I keep conjuring it crows. <laughs> they collect shiny things for me. Oh, God. I feel like you yeah. could really lean into the crazy with the Ring of Winter. You absolutely yeah. could. But another thing that I would say could be interesting would be a Frostbrand weapon. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know what a frostbane weapon is. Uh, it's is basically a magic sword that mm -hmm. uh, deals. deals extra cold damage, but oh. it gives you, I believe, resistance to fire damage. That's cool. While you're holding it because mm, it's like it so cold. It gives me an interesting thought. If you, a uh, kind of subgenre of my build, if you wanted to go a different subclass for wizard, you could do blade singer mm -hmm. wizard and go yeah. with a frostbrand weapon. That would be pretty fun. Yeah. That's true, it, actually. Yeah. It does give Frost you resistance brand. to fire damage, by the way. Yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that way, if you come across like a group of poachers or whatever who are trying to fuck up your your environment, you can tell them no, and then when they try to hit you with a torch, you're not phased by it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just like try again, stab. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. That's really cool. I think that could be kind of fun. When, yeah. Did you come up with a name for your character? Uh, I don't think I did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know I'm what? Fantasy curious. Bear Grylls. Yeah. <laughs> he could turn into a polar bear by this point, I think. Bear Grizzly. I think that's about the end of my builds. Okay. Sweet. I like it, honestly. I, Very cool concept. Thank you. Yeah, I thank would you. love to use it. Again, like as an NPC, you, you got to go through like a really dangerous territory. Mm -hmm. There's, you know... It, uh, a strider or aragorn type character mm -hmm. there's one person who can guide you through here they're not all there necessarily mm -hmm. but no one can get you through except for them so you have to trust them that's yeah yeah be a lot of fun. yeah i almost like this is gonna be a really niche reference but i also i kind of attribute like the the sort of like low grunting speak of like elliot from leverage oh oh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. I 100% you know, with he you like, there. He only speaks like here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like if Batman was a chain smoker. Oh my god, I love that series. That's a good series. It's a great show. Anybody uh, who hasn't uh, watched Leverage, you should watch it. You'll get five ideas for rogues, specifically. If you want a very fun, campy show that has a lot of heart, that that's a good one. I love that show so much. It's so good. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while, though. Man. Yeah, it's a good one. Anyways. Um, Caleb, I believe you have the last yeah, build for us. I, I will go ahead and start. I'll start with my name. Uh, my name for this build is Aurora Borealis at this time of year. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I decided to go. Uh, so I, I was very similar in Wavelength with Daniel. I created a druid as well. Uh -huh. uh, I also wanted to create something that embodies, you know, the feeling of winter, but I went the exact opposite direction, which is where you went for like the cold, harsh environment. Mm -hmm. I went for the silent, terrifying beauty of, of winter. Oh, Interesting. Okay. okay. So what I did was I have a protector Asimar, uh, Circle of the Stars Druid, uh, 14, 14 levels all the way through. And <clears throat> I'm flavoring every bit of radiant as an Aurora Borealis. So Ooh, okay. what a weird concept you've come up with. <laughs> so I like they, that. They though. get That's their cool. wings. It's it's Aurora Borealis. Mm -hmm. Um whenever they cast radiant spells, it's Aurora Borealis. Uh localized entirely within your kitchen. I'm gonna get as many <laughs> of those jokes you. out now. I, I hate can. you so much. I, I miss the reference, I think, but um <laughs> it's okay. After we're done, just look up steamed hams. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Just trust me. Yeah, no. It's, just it's, Google the words steamed hams. It's a meme. Okay. It's a good meme. I love it. But yeah, just, just look it up and it'll all make sense. Okay. But I can't also, say Also, side note, Aaron is the most plugged in person I've ever met who also lives under a rock. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a pretty accurate way to describe me. <laughs> like, make he make watched one... Game of Thrones this year. It yep. does make it wonderful because we, we can give him these references and just watch somebody experience them for the first time. Next, we're going to find no. out he hasn't seen the dear sister bit. Oh, my God. The what bit? <laughs> it's a very... Aaron, I, it's, a, is, I, it's a I'm very classic SNL skit. I'm not memeing. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Oh my Steve Hibbs and dear sister. Okay. Watch them. We'll start a list. <laughs> a list Hampson. of very old memes we introduced Aaron to in December 2020. And, and what was the other one? Uh, Dear Sister and Steamed Hams. Dear Sister, okay. Oh and that's a God. SNL skit, okay. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's okay. so good. Steamed I'll Hams be... needs no other context. It, The internet will find it for you. Yeah. All right. 
Oh my god. Okay. So, anyways, just know that every time I say Aurora Borealis, we're thinking of that video. And when you go back and watch it, it'll add a lot of content. <laughs> um, so, for cantrips, uh, I went pretty similar to what you guys did frostbite. Uh, I actually did take shape water because, you know, uh, you can freeze nice. water with it. So, why not? Yeah. Uh, I also took light because it's a very radiant themed character. Sure. Uh, resistance and guidance because. I, I get them natural. I get one of them naturally as a am a circle of stars druid, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and then resistance is just fun. And I resistance don't know, I, is pretty good. I, I like the idea of surrounding somebody in like the kind of light of uh, an aurora and being like, "All right, I'm protecting you for now." Um, and then lastly, shillelagh, which will make sense later in the build mm -hmm. for one specific spell because I wanted it. Um, you have that power exactly. Uh, for first level, I mean, like I went very clearly straight towards a little bit of ice and mostly radiant. So I have fairy fire because, um, come on. Yeah. Thanks for if sense. you have the option to take fairy fire, you should take fairy fire. Exactly. Uh, guiding bolts, but that's because Circle Star Struids get that automatically. Honestly, yeah. that's, I feel like that's one of the coolest features of Circle I, Stars. I do. I it's love really, it. really cool. It's so good. And then ice knife as well. Um, because I think we all chose Ice Knife. If you didn't yeah. go Ice Knife with a winter themed character, yeah. unless you're like a barbarian, what yeah. are you thinking? It, yeah, if you, if you went <laughs> like Storm Herald Tundra Barbarian, sure. That yeah. makes sense why you wouldn't have Ice Knife. You literally couldn't get it or use it. Exactly. But if you're building an ice based character and can get Ice Knife, or sorry, the winter themed character and can get Ice Knife, you probably take, should. Take yeah, Ice Knife. Exactly. Really and truly. For second level, I actually kind of followed what Aaron did with his. I took some wind spells because I liked the idea of like creating small blizzards. So yeah. I took Gust of Wind. Um, I took Moonbeam because um, that felt appropriate for a Radiant character. It does. And yeah. Healing Spirit sense. because, again, That's a good spell. you can just flavor that as being the center of an Aurora Borealis. Yeah. So. And it's a good spell that's been nerfed a little bit. It has. But it like, it. congratulations. Yes. Now it can do exactly what it was always supposed to do. Exactly. exactly. I didn't realize they nerfed it. Did they? Did they throw that into Tasha's or? Uh, no, it, it was it, errated yeah. a few months ago. Okay. Yeah. I need to look that up. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, they just nerfed how many times it can heal, so it can't just sit there for the. Smart. You can't just walk back and forth. You can't just <laughs> conga line through it for a full minute. Exactly. Yeah. Regain 10d6 hit points. Oh, you multiclassed cleric? Oh, well, 10d6 plus like 50. It was so dumb. <laughs> oh my goodness. So for third level, uh, daylight, because again, radiance. Uh, elemental mm. weapon, because you can do uh, fire and cold damage with that, and you can flavor fire damage as radiant. It obviously doesn't deal radiant damage, but you can flavor it that way. if you. Yeah, want. I mean... Like an aurora if you, sword if you touch yeah. a light bulb it gets hot exactly um i also took sleet storm because it, it, thematically it's a fun spell plus it's it's yeah. very fun to just cause a bunch of people to fall over because you're pelting them with ice so <laughs> yeah. congratulations 14 enemies go ass over tea kettle because <laughs> exactly uh for fourth level i also took fire shield um for yeah. the ice ice portion of it and for the fire portion because again you can flavor that and this is why i took shillelagh i also have guardian of nature not a great spell <laughs> it's objectively admit. not I'm a gonna, good spell <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i know the spell's name but i don't even know what it does so i'm gonna look it up the, the reason i wanted <gasps> shillelagh is because it you can make dexterity or wisdom based attack rolls with advantage i was like all right we gotta take shillelagh so i can do this uh, it is not a good spell it, it also works really well with the Circle of Stars, like, arrow shot ability. Yeah, well, see, that's what I was thinking. And at 14th level, you get resistance to um, uh, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. So it does make sense for a druid to cast this and just wade into battle. I feel like it's one of the very unique places where it might be situationally okay and not just, like, bad. So I did, I did want to do that simply because I love the idea of just, like, embodying nature, even if it's not a great spell. So... And then I also took Cone of Cold because, come on, uh, Tasha's gave Druids access to that, which is nice. It also removes the fact that, uh, that well, a Circle of the Land Druids got that off of an expanded spell list, so I hope they fix that because it doesn't make sense otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks, Tasha's, for giving me access to that. 
uh, and Mass Cure Wounds. And then uh, what's funny is Aaron mentioned a lot of the spells I was looking at. Investiture of Ice, again, not a great spell. I took it because fuck you. That's why <laughs> I want to invest in ice. I took it because you're not my dad. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and then my capstone spell was Whirlwind because, again, I like to uh. play that as a blizzard and just, you know, creating this massive storm. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of radiant and ice themed spells with a little bit of control, but I just like the idea of flavoring it all as the Aurora, as well as, uh, as well as winter and just creating that like beautiful and terrifying effect that I find winter to usually have. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's most of what I, I believe the best that. word for it is sublime. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's uniquely terrifying and beautiful. And so for my, for my stats, I did standard array, took a ability score increases to get my wisdom up to max because that's what I like to do. But I did take a, um, a, a feat. I took Eldritch Adept, which allows oh. you to take a invocation. And mm-hmm. I took Misty Vision so I can cast Silent Image at will because that felt like it made a lot of sense. It, it seems fitting, especially given the meme that you chose to use for the name of your character. Exactly. <laughs> Aurora Borealis. So nice. Localized entirely in your kitchen. <laughs> For <laughs> yes. May I see it? No. No. <laughs> I promise, Aaron, it will make sense. Anyways, you'll see. Um, <laughs> for items, uh, I went with two that were. At, I, Aaron, I told you that I chose one that was kind of mundane. I actually changed it last second. Oh. So first one is Helm of Brilliance, which is a very rare item and very powerful. But Makes yeah. sense. I mean, it lets you cast things like Daylight, Fireball, Prismatic <coughs> Spray, Ball of Fire. All makes sense. Yeah, Pretty good. you um, can justify all of those very easily with the character. Exactly. The other one I took is from Tasha's. Uh, it's the Absorbing Tattoo of Radiance, which basically gives mm. you resistance to radiant damage. Nice. Uh, and two, if you get hit by radiant damage, you could use your reaction to absorb it, gain immunity, and heal a certain amount. That's cool. And so I took that because they, they have Moonbeam, and they are a melee-based druid. Mm-hmm. It would make perfect sense to center it on themselves, hit a bunch of people, and heal off of it. I really liked that idea. That sounds cool. That's metal as hell. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is my character. <laughs> I like how you both went druid, but they're very different characters, obviously. And can I point out that neither of us is pure ice mage? Yeah, exactly. And I, I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> the one who went pure ice mage was a wizard. Yeah. Got well, thank you everybody for stopping into the meandering market. I uh, hope you walk away with treasured memories and may your games be filled with fun all through the year. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.